in footage mm-hmm. in the scene. The podcast has started. I bass radio. On. I noticed on the last. I listen to every podcast. I don't know if you do. I go back and listen to them just to see if they're good and to see what we can improve. Do you listen, ever listen to them? I listen to parts of them. Okay. to make huge are you ready to find you signed up for Disney Plus <laughs> dude are you signed up for Disney Plus yes, I think you said you are absolutely. that is the best seven dollars anybody <laughs> yeah. could spend when did the movie Lady and the Tramp come out the Disney movie the new remake of Lady and the Tramp no idea I think it came out pretty recently <laughs> it's already on Disney Plus we just watched it awesome movie <laughs> Super good really? movie, yeah. Do you like kids kind of kids movies like that? Did you uh, see the li- the new Lion King? No. Do you think you would like the new Lion King? I have no idea. Did you like the original Lion King? When I was a little kid. All right, it's still a good movie. <laughs> Believe right. me, it's really good. And uh, Lady and the Tramp was also quite quite a good movie, and it's already up on Disney Plus. And literally every single Disney movie you could ever think of is also there. Yeah, that's the awesome thing about it. So much good Parties, no touch with a bunch of dudes. All right. Oh, I did go to the thing. All right, that's good. How was it? Do you like things? Yeah. I think I'd rather play football. It was ethnic. It was mixed. What was the mix? Mexican. All right, so I was actually a baby shower over the weekend. (laughs) Going to be doing the Spanish speaking kind of thing. Well, the couple of times. Dude, after you eat dinner, they put on the music and everybody's like, just leans back in their seat. Like, I'm not dancing. I'm not doing that. You go to a Mexican baby shower. <laughs> You're not supposed to turn off the lights. And they had this like a disco disco lights. <laughs> like, well, I don't even think we got around to opening the presents. <laughs> opening presents at a party. <laughs> the Mexican baby showers, like, turn off the lights. It's still a rager. Crank up the music <laughs> and let's start dancing. And people are getting down, dude. So do people dance at the wedding? Oh, yeah. People got after well, it? Well, all the Mexicans dance. The white people were just <laughs> either sitting eating cupcakes or they're like, we're out of here. Yeah, yeah. Basically. Hey, we didn't sign up for this. <laughs> I thought we were coming to to see a couple of people get married, not, not to have a wild dance party. Do um, you like to dance? Not really. Oh, so you didn't get up and dance? You were no. one of the white dudes sitting at yeah. the dance? I love to dance. Really? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why I love to dance. Okay. Because I grew up, when I grew up, I lived in a predominantly black neighborhood. And when I was growing up, all my friends were black, pretty much. Mm-hmm. When I was a kid, I was in the neighborhood. I went to a school. My parents sent me to a school in the neighborhood. You know, but all for black guys, you know, black guys could really dance. And so I got into <laughs> dancing, true. man, and that helped me out a lot. I met my wife dancing. I met my wife on a dance floor at a dance party, and 
she even told me, like, when I saw you, I thought, here comes this gringo. He's going to suck at dancing. And then when I started dancing, I could actually dance because I learned how to dance. <laughs> and she was impressed by the fact that, that I was able, dance. yeah, that I could dance and I could, like, keep a rhythm. So I go to these Mexican parties, and it's all Mexicans out there just getting down, and then I'm just dancing. I don't know the steps. So I just have to do the same steps, but to a, like at a different speed. <laughs> I wish I could do all the steps. You ever see how Mexican people kind of move their feet when they're dancing? Uh -huh. It's pretty cool, huh? Yeah, it's good. We got a, in our congregation, we got a Venezuelan, and those guys do like salsa dancing. Uh -huh. Don't you wish you could dance salsa? Yeah. That would be nice, right? It would be cool if I knew like just all the dances. You just get Everyone's out Everyone's like, what? Yeah, you just, <laughs> or when they do those circles, you know the dance circles? Yeah, and and then someone's and supposed then to somebody's go, supposed to go in the middle and do that, their thing. I hate that. That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> no, you think it's a lot of pressure to try to do something cool? I always gotta get away from those. And but, then some old guy hops in the middle, and everyone goes crazy. Dude, that's a good call. I was just about to mention at this party, there was an old guy, and he did a pretty cool trick. Maybe I might try to do this for myself <laughs> sometime. They're like, "Old oh, guy, come on, come over here and dance." He's like, "No, no, no." They're like, "Come on!" And so he doesn't have a limp, but he pretended he had like an old man's limp and he like limped into the middle <laughs> of the nice. circle and then he took a beat and then he just started doing a just like started just started shaking it. his hips dude like how <laughs> latino men can do just move their hips around man we, uh, white dudes when we try to move our hips we look so dumb we can't like we can't sway them the way those guys do we look yeah. like robots but anyways have you, have you ever seen the movie hitch with uh, will smith no there's this scene in there so hitch is like a guy who teaches men how to be good with with women. Oh yes, yeah. With Will Smith. Yeah, I've heard of that. And at one point, he's teaching how to dance, mm -hmm. and the guy like wants to go crazy, and he's like, "No, <laughs> that's not how you do it. You just you, you just go do a two step. You know, two step. You just kind of like step one way and step the other way, but to the rhythm, <laughs> and you just keep it super simple. Keep it super like Sue, keep it super simple, and that is good advice. And if you can master that two step then you could go to a Mexican party, you can go to any party. You just kind of speed it up or slow it down. And you try to like, you try to look cool, like <laughs> look kind of cool. Like You're like, I know what I'm doing. Like, <laughs> yeah. yep, that's it. And so um, Mexican party, that was a good time, dude. I had a lot of fun there. Did you go by yourself to that wedding or did you go with your whole no, family? No, no. All right, so yeah. that makes it a little bit easier. Yeah. Because you guys can shoot the breeze. What about your sisters? They get up and dance? Yeah, you have people to uh, talk yeah, to. Yeah. <laughs> you go to a wedding by yourself, you may or may not know people The good there. thing is we did know people. So oh, that's I good. I could just talk to people. All right, so there's like some people your age and mm -hmm. some friends and stuff there. Yeah. Your sisters get into dancing? Uh, they do. And what about your parents? My parents dance. All right, but you're, so you're the only one that's not that into dancing. Correct. You better learn how to dance, dude. I'm telling you. Dancing's important. I go to these parties, I see a bunch of women up there dancing by themselves. Like... Well, they dance with each other, too. Well, they do, but then I look at all the husbands, and the husbands are just sitting at the table, like, looking at their phones. I'm like, why don't you go up there and dance with your wife? Women love to dance. <laughs> they love it. And um, and they're blessed because they can just dance with each other. A couple of dudes can't dance <laughs> with each other. A couple of dudes. I, although I found a loophole for that, how a couple of dudes can dance with each other. Oh, no. If a couple of dudes, if each one has a little baby, then you can kind of dance with your baby, and another dude can dance with his baby. But you guys can kind of like dance next to each other. It's kind of like you're dancing to each other. We got the babies as like a, like a barrier. <laughs> a buffer. Yeah, it's like a buffer. <laughs> you're not getting too close to each other. The baby buffer. Yeah. So the, I guess the thing dudes can do is like run around and throw a ball at each other. That's exactly. What dude, dude, that's what dudes are built for. That's what we're all about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you ever get into having to play sports with a little kid before? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of frustrating to play sports with a little <laughs> Definitely, kid. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Sure. You can't like you can't try very can't hard do anything. they break all the rules <laughs> you gotta like let them get points and stuff it's, <laughs> yeah. it's kind of not that fun so i was playing um soccer with my my six-year-old isaiah and he hates losing he's a he's a terrible loser so first of all the whole like the whole context of this game of soccer all the rules him definitely you can't kick it very hard because if you kick it too hard, that doesn't count. <laughs> it doesn't count. Yeah. And if you block more than one one of my kicks in a row, then you're disqualified. Like you're disqualified. He's putting all these rules in that make it so he's so it's like not that fun. But you got to try to put on a um, a good face, and also you don't want to just let him win outright because then he'll just think he's a super awesome soccer player when he's not. <laughs> so I'm kind of keeping the score even. Like he scores a goal, then I score a goal. Right. And then at one point, it was like 8-8, eight, eight, and I scored a goal. I go up 9-8. I've been letting him, like, <laughs> carry the lead. Yeah. And I wanted him to just kind of get his head around what it's like. 
as soon as I go up nine eight, it's like disaster time. He starts having a meltdown. <laughs> like, he's like, you're going to win. That's against the rules. I don't want to do this anymore. You're cheating. I'm like, what do you mean I'm cheating? He's like, the rules say I always have to be winning at all times. I'm like, what rules? You made up the rules. He's like, yeah, but that's one of the rules. You, you agreed to it. So, um, oh my so then, like, I had to calm him down. I'm like, I, I didn't want to let him know I was letting him win. Uh -huh. So I have to tell him, I'm going to let you win. You let them win. And you do beat them sometimes. Yeah. It's like to be careful, like because you could so easily just whip any kid, like twenty million to zero. <laughs> you kind of really. He just you throw know, the kid to the side and just plow. Even on accident, like so, my kids like that foot races sometimes. <laughs> like you're gonna dust the six year old like so quickly. I wonder who would win a race between us. A foot. Do you want an honest opinion? Yeah, <laughs> honest. I would. Are you a pretty fast runner? Yeah. I would like to have a foot race with you, just to just to prove that, just to put that to rest. Um, who? So, are you one of the fastest guys, like in your group of friends? Yeah, you are. Andrew well, Young. I, I, eventually, somebody will will beat me. So you're a pretty fast race. runner, huh? Yeah. I feel like I don't like to keep up with. Nice. Right. <laughs> your stride. You can have a way to actually hit your stride. To a race with a bank. It was my banker. I don't know how we got into Does it. Does this have to do with banking or? No, nah, this is just as an aside. <laughs> he, he, he was he was a big he was like a big chubby guy, uh -huh. and he he was a smoker, and I would always give him a hard time. I'm like, dude, you're in terrible shape. I would just tell him, like, you're in terrible shape. <laughs> What's your deal? He was single. He was like 39. He was single. He had a big old gut. Like every time I see him, he'd be drinking like a bunch of soda and smoking cigarettes. But we became friends because uh -huh. he was in the bank and I would see him all the time. And I would tell him like, dude, you're in awful shape. Like you got to clean up your life, man. <laughs> what are you thinking? No wonder you're, uh, no wonder you're single. Like quit smoking and drinking yeah. so much soda. You're nuts. It's like, dude, I just started running again. Like, so? Like that doesn't matter. <laughs> you still smoke cigarettes. You still, you just gotta, I don't care. It's like, dude, I'm getting in shape. I'm like, how long did you run? He's like, I ran six miles. I told him, I guarantee you I'll beat you in a foot race. 100%. I don't even run. I don't even work out. I'm just healthy. I'll definitely dust you. And we had a, he's a Wells Fargo banker. We had a, we had a foot race out in the parking lot. I, I killed him. Nice. And? Um, yes. Who'd you it, race? It was some Mexican kid. Uh, a kid? Like an actual kid? Well, he's like a year younger than me. Okay, and did, and you won the race. Yeah. Did you smoke him? No. No, it was close. Well, he's like one of the fastest kids I know. Oh, and you beat him? Yeah. Oh, so you actually are pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I like that, man. Well, that brings us on to what I think your specialty is, dude. <laughs> I think you need to be doing more foot races. <laughs> nah, that's not. That's not. Uh, All cause, right. Because on the last episode, I promised you I was going to tell you what I think. Yes. I, I what I think waiting, is your really is what is your biggest strong suit. And what you, I'll tell you what your weakness is, what I think your weakness is too. I like it a lot. And you don't have to worry about that because I'm I know what my weaknesses are as well. All right. So just FYI. All right. Um, we're at 13 minutes in. I think I'm gonna do a pitch here. All right, pitch. Ibassbusiness.com. Please visit ibassbusiness.com if you're one of our seven lists. How many people are we have listening to this podcast now? Yeah, we have like the same. Is it seven or did it drop down? I think we're at six. We, we were at seven before. They probably don't like this new this new format. All right. Well, we've only been doing the format one episode. Yeah. So. Somebody might watch this on YouTube or catch it on LinkedIn. Right. Please go to ibassbusiness.com. Check out the cost reduction service. It's an amazing service. I, I just hired this marketing firm. We put together this um this. 20 minute presentation talking about how this service actually works. One of our clients, we saved them $80,000 a year. They took the savings, they reinvested it in promoting their business. They just landed a huge, they landed a huge contract like four or five months ago. Last month they billed $615,000 to this new client in a single month. Five hundred dollars, please. That's I'll give you good. if I don't save you at least five thousand, I'll give you the money back. Ibassbusiness.com or call me 425-332. 5058. I like to say it with a little a little rhythm. 425 332 5058. Extension 101. Mic drop. And is that, what, that would be the next step because I hit the rhythm. All right. So now in this next segment, 
we're supposed to be talking about business stuff. I could talk to you about you in this con in this section, or we could put that off until the last section of the show. What would you prefer? You want to get right into it? Surprise me. All right, I'm gonna surprise you. So we'll talk about something else right here. Ooh, okay. Okay. So I mentioned on the last episode, I'm I'm interested now in the social media stuff. Uh -huh. Have you been using social media a lot for a long time? No. You're not a social media person. No, I've just been started the last couple months because I mean that's what I do now. I so. never been on social media whatsoever. I don't get it actually. I'll even be honest. I'm starting to get it. I've never understood it. For some reason I understand people love their animals so much. <laughs> yeah. Like there's all these people all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> like just go talk to one of them. <laughs> yeah. Like agreed, you don't need you don't agreed. need you don't need a phone or an animal to get some <laughs> some interaction. Like they're everywhere. There's tons of people. You ever been on the freeway at like three in the morning? And you're like, why are all these people on the freeway right the, now? Yeah, I wondered like, that. Where are all these people coming from? <laughs> and where are they going? And the fact is there's just so many people out there's there just tons. that you just, you can't avoid them. <laughs> they're everywhere. <laughs> they're in the grocery store. They're at Starbucks. They're hiring you to do their bookkeeping. <laughs> they need you to help them with social media yeah. stuff. Like you go to a park. They're there. They're playing soccer. They're hanging out with their kids. There's all these people all over the place. So, or especially if you go to a church or if you're in a congregation, even at work, like you just don't need another tool to really meet people, I guess. But for some reason, people prefer to sit like scroll endlessly get, on their get, phone. Get synthetic human interaction, <laughs> like not the real thing. <laughs> But it's not like not like butter. It's like margarine. You know, it's like margarine interaction. It's mm -hmm. synthetic butter is what margarine is. It's heated up vegetable oil, but it looks and feels like butter. And for some reason, people prefer that to real <laughs> butter, which is strange. But I digress. So I've never been able to get my head around what it is you are supposed to do on social media. Okay. But now on LinkedIn, I've been doing LinkedIn. Now I'm starting to get it. Now I'm starting to. I'm actually starting to get it. So it's not as good as real human interaction, but it is more efficient. It is more efficient. I'm getting sure. that now. Because like when I go around knocking on doors, you get rejected like 99 times just to meet one person. I got up early. On both days on the weekend and spent a couple of hours each morning just by myself going on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. um, and so now what I'm seeing is it is a good way to meet people if you do it the right way. I think if you just post content on there, you're going to end up being quite disappointed in your results. For real. But you are taking interest in other people's posts and commenting, it's actually quite easy to start to Get 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 a little get a little interaction going, and it takes a lot less time than knocking on doors. It takes a lot less time than knocking on doors, and I think you got to be strategic about it. Like you have to realize that you might meet someone who can start referring to you. You might not meet like an actual client themselves. And networking is like that. You know, you got to put in a little groundwork to create a network of people that can that can send you leads, can refer people to you. So I think that's what LinkedIn will be really good for. I also was thinking about something else. How good does it feel? when you post something on social media and people like it or people comment on it, it's exciting, right? Yeah, it is. To like get a comment? Yeah. Uh -huh. Like you put something up and someone likes it, you're like, oh, I got a like here. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's, like let's see what this is all about. And then if I get a like, I'll even, if I don't know the person, I'll click on their profile and go over there and like check it out. Have you ever done that? Mm -hmm. Like who's this person that's liking my stuff? I, I need to know more about them. People like me? That's what you really mean. People like my stuff, dude. How awesome is that? So you could be that for other people. True. That's what I was thinking. Oh, like, I see. A lot of these posts that I was commenting on, I'm the only comment. So someone took their time, they put together a little piece of content, they put it up online. They're like, people are gonna love this. That's what you, <laughs> yeah. you do. When you put something together, you're like, this is gonna this kill. This is gonna be the best. <laughs> people are gonna love this so much. You put it up, it's like nobody says anything, <laughs> nobody likes it, no yes. one cares. So if you're the one that's liking other people's stuff, I was just thinking this, like, that's a good way to get people to visit your profile. That's probably the be way better yeah. than, than posting content. Mm -hmm. It's way easier. It's way faster. Like, it's a, it's a way to get people's attention without, what would be the word, without being, like, egotistical or something, mm -hmm. which is, again, I was thinking about you and how you don't like 
you don't like the idea of being with somebody just because uh, they know you're there trying to sell them or something mm -hmm. like that. So for guys like that, I think that's a really solid way to get people to come visit you. And if they're interested, then they'll let you know. But you can you can do something really good for a person. You mm -hmm. could you can make it feel like their effort was worthwhile, um, in a, in a very efficient way. Right. So you're gonna do it or not? You're doing it? Oh yeah, I'm definitely doing LinkedIn. But... Yeah, and start doing the comments and oh, stuff. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. But we got kind of a so like we work together, but you also got your website business. Mm -hmm. So we have probably have probably sort of a similar clientele. Although I'm moving just to automation. This man. Yeah. Automation is a super good business. Mm -hmm. We I haven't had a chance to really push that for you, but when we eventually start hiring salesmen, like we were talking about before we got on the podcast, mm -hmm. I want to start pushing through. That's always been my dream, is to have a channel where we can push through services where if you're a business person like so much of what you need will just be taken care of by us. That's always been my dream. That's the business. I'm testing out this sales service to help me build the infrastructure. I was talking to Zach before we came on, but I'm hiring a company that's gonna help us build so we can hire salespeople effectively. But if that works, then I'd like to be able to give that to people. You know what I'm saying? And do the cost savings and then bring in the automation so like so much of the stuff that holds most business people back is just taken care of. You got your sales machine, you got your finance stuff taken care of, you're not dealing in paperwork because you got your automation. Mm -hmm. And if you get back into websites, we help you with the websites. We're, I'm learning about social media, so if we could have a way to help people with social media. So like all you really gotta do is service your customers and just do whatever the thing is you get, that you're good at. You just do that. Mm -hmm. So there you go, man. The higher level thinking. The higher level thinking or just whatever you love the most. Whatever you like to do. Yeah, whatever it is you really, really like to do. All right. That's good. That's good. I'm going to go ahead and do another pitch here. All right. Can you believe 21 minutes, dude? I can't. Before you know it, we'll be at 32. That's insane how fast it goes by, doesn't it? <laughs> at the be Like I said, at the beginning of every episode, it feels like we're never going to get through it. <laughs> and then it's like <laughs> almost done. over. And then it's almost over. Hey, I just mentioned uh, book bookkeeping and accounting. We are primarily a bookkeeping and accounting firm. Please visit ibassbusiness.com. There's a whole bunch of companies out there that do what we do in terms of bookkeeping, but we have a unique structure whereby you so see we hire accountants who are good at customer service too. So we have a professional accountant who will be your dedicated representative who's a controller level accountant, but you also get great customer service from this person. I was just looking at some of the emails that one of our reps was writing to one of our clients over the weekend. So polite, so positive so encouraging and the client that we were working with wrote us back and said you know what I just have to say it you guys are awesome exclamation point because this guy that we just hired who's got a an MBA you know, he's got a You still feeling that way? Like your sweet spot is? Yeah. Right. I want to know your opinion. Here's what it. my opinion is. This is what I've seen from working with you. And just so you know, um, I have a sweet spot and I have like severe weaknesses too. So well, uh, take this I in the, take, yeah, sure. we all do, man. So just take this in the spirit in which it's intended. All right. I'm not gonna criticize you. I'm just saying. So I think your sweet spot is I think you're like like you've told me a couple of times, you can just find patterns and take tests. Mm -hmm. I think you are a very good learner. I think you're a, a, a great learner. I think you're super good at picking up new things um, and putting them into play. Mm -hmm. Where I think you're probably pretty weak is at actually doing day-to-day -day tasks <laughs> consistently. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, I'm weak at that too, so you know. But so so what's hard is Tedious tasks. But then when you start to getting into the like the monotony uh -huh. of doing the same thing over and over again, 
you just you seem like you lose interest extremely quickly. <laughs> is that accurate or not? Yeah, I think that's pretty accurate. Yeah. So I think you're somehow gonna have to figure out what kind of framework you're gonna put in place to only be doing like learning new things. Hmm. And, and so probably where you can do that, where I think it'll be good, like we had this one mm -hmm. client that you're doing automation for, you're gonna have to keep challenges all the time. So you can figure out how to take what you know and apply it to what they're doing. But as soon as you learn how to do it, you're gonna have to hand it off to somebody. Have you thought about that? Yeah, that's good. I think that's kind of what I was wanting to do with, with this business that I started, LYS. And it might still be possible because, I mean, Kobe works with me on this too. Mm -hmm. And what, what kind of personality? Is he more like a grinder or is he more of a learn new things and, and then he gets bored doing the same thing over and over again? The thing I think, well, the thing he's best at is just talking to people. Okay. Um, but also, which is good because obviously I have a hard you, time with that. Yeah. Well, you're good at, you're, <laughs> I think you're good at it, but you just don't like it. Right? I think you're pretty good at it. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. And then... But I do think uh, he can do mountainous tasks better than I can. Um, and he has a harder time finding little details. So, every machine has its own little. It's like free. Uh, oh, you have to like really crank on it. Does it get stuck? Your hands. Yeah, these clunky machines. Ah, <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> when something goes, it's like super cold, and you're 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 frozen yeah. already. And one more thing. So <laughs> yeah. So I think, man, um, I don't know how you're gonna do it, but. So I'm, and then so that that also knowing that that's got me thinking about like how we have to work together too. Because I think giving you like a task where it's the same thing over and over. Mm -hmm. again, I don't say this without like boosting up your ego too much, but you're kind of too smart and too creative for for admin work. So that's what see, gotcha. but that's what sucks because when you're 19 and you're just getting started. The tendency is going to be for the people you work with to just give to you give like, you work, like take yeah. some low level work first and like uh -huh. what would be the word um, like kind of pay your dues here gotcha. and work your way up. But since you're going to suck at that because <laughs> you really don't like it, it's going to be hard for you to break out, you know, and like kind of break through to the higher level work where you're actually uh -huh. going to where you're actually going to flourish. So that's got me thinking about that. But anytime you're going to get anytime you get stuck doing stuff that's not like figuring things out. That's not going to be cool. You're you're <laughs> you're a figure, dude, and I'm not. And you're, I actually think you're more of a figure out person than I am. I'm actually not a figure it out person. Like, I'm, I like to, I love to learn, uh -huh. but I'm more of a this is what we need to do person. Gotcha. Not like this is how we're going to do it. I think you're more of like this is how we could do it. Are you? You think? Or are you more like this is what we got to do? Come on, let's move forward. Or are you more like? Yeah, what? I like figuring figuring things. You out. seem like a you things. seem like a real yeah. figure to me. Especially the way I've seen you do some of this automation work. Like you're real good at like putting the pieces together. Even stuff you have no idea what you're doing. Right? <laughs> yeah. But you you created a system that right, actually right. works. But probably running that system and maintaining that system will get quite I think it would probably get quite boring for you. Well, I guess that's where the automation bit yeah. could come in. You go, so that would be like I think would, you gotta get high supply. You ever heard that expression? <laughs> yeah. It's like for drug dealers who use their own drugs. Yeah. yeah. You got to get high on your own automation supply. Um, and I believe me, dude, because I've got a lot of work experience, especially like in accounting, doing stuff over and over again. When I'm not, I'm also kind of not that type of person. Mm -hmm. I'm always, the, I'm the type of person that likes to figure out like what's the next thing we got to do. The next big what, thing. Like what's the thing we got to yeah. do to like, what's the end goal? This is where I'm at. Uh -huh. What's the end goal? Okay, let's work it backwards. What's the next thing we got to do? Okay, that's done. There. Now, what's the next thing? I always am like a kind of. I was always thinking about like, what's the next thing? Mm -hmm. When I get pulled back into the present, it makes me feel like bummed out. I like to really be moving towards. Yeah. Whatever the end game is, I like to be taking the steps 
Yeah. Right. That's, that's that my personality. Sense. And so if I get called on, like you've probably already noticed if I, if I get called on to deal with like tasks of something that is not the next step, it, it, I find it very it's hard. Frustrating. It's frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why I need guys like you around and I need guys like um, our chief operating officer Dwayne around uh -huh. who are really good at like being in the nuts and bolts of the present. That's that's where I I start to get I start to get pretty weak. Gotcha. Pretty weak. I always gotta be like dealing at what like what's the thing we gotta do? I, I keep repeating myself. <laughs> but I think you're a you're a figure it out person, uh -huh. man. Do you think that's accurate? Yeah. I think it's very accurate. So I think you always gotta be looking for like what is a pro what's a problem I can solve. And when it's solved you're going to have to figure out how to quickly get someone else involved because otherwise it's just, I, I just, I don't think you'll be doing your best work. I think you'll get disillusioned and start to hate your work. Okay? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it, it makes sense. Yeah. All right, man. All right. Well, there you go. So keep that in mind, dude. And if I could, one last thing, I could just say that like from my own experience, because I got like, how old you're 19? Uh -huh. So I'm 36. I got 17 years on you. Yeah. Um, from my own experience, man, if you get caught doing work that just, zone of what you're really good at, it really does start to stink. And I'm just now time to be able to do things you yeah. like doing. And I can tell you it's it's way better. So you're not young, dude. Even if it means making less money right? Sacrificing some years, making less money, but doing what you love and starting to build up a clientele that lets you be yourself. Uh -huh. In the long run you'll make way more. And be happier, have more free money. Like complete life. Time um, of defense, yeah, um, in a big like military base, just yeah. rows and rows and rows of cubicles, and I was in there just doing payroll, just banging in hours, dude, for like three thousand people. It, it it made me so depressed to be in there doing that work, yeah, because it just wasn't me, you know. But I had I had bills to pay, so I just grinded it out. But while you don't have a family and you're not married, dude, you got prime opportunities to do whatever you feel like doing. <laughs> so go ahead and do it, man. All Any right. final comments? No, just zip it up. Zip it up and zip, zip it out. out. Zippity doo -dah. Was that satisfying, Zach? Yeah. All right, dude. Just do it, man. <laughs>